Okay, in this example, we're going to talk about confidence intervals and confidence level again. And so whenever I read a statistics problem, and when I come across a number, I like to write it down, what it means. So a nutrition lab tests 40 reduced sodium hot dogs. Well, 40 must be N since it's my sample size. And I want, and I find the mean content is 310. Well, the mean then is 310. The population's known standard deviation of sodium content is 36 milligrams. So my standard deviation is equal to 36 milligrams. Now, knowing the stand population standard deviation is quite rare, but these are set up at the beginning of our uh, statistics aspect of this unit, and so we're going to know it for a little while. So we are asked to find a 90% confidence interval. Well, in order to do it, We'll look at our formula booklet. Here is the formula for our confidence interval. And so it is, the confidence interval is equal to x bar plus or minus z, and I'm going to call it z star, over sigma times root n. So if I want a 90% confidence level, then I need to find z star for 90%. Well, if I think about my normal curve, if I want this middle portion to be 90%, well, there's 5% on both of these to make 100. So I'm going to use inverse normal of 0 0.05. So if I go to my distributions, I inverse normal, and it's already put in there for me. If I calculate it, I can get my z star is going to be equal to one point plus or minus 1.64. Five, And so there is my z star for my calculation. So if I want to find my confidence interval, I just go 310 plus or minus 1.645 times sigma over the square root of 40. And this is my calculation that I will do. If I want to do it really quickly in my calculator, if I go to statistics, and I go to test, I'm going to go to Z interval. I'm going to put some uh, statistics in there. Oh, I had, let me try that again. I'm going to do Z interval number seven. I'm going to put a statistic in there. I know my standard deviation is uh, 36. The mean is 310. My sample is 40. My confidence level is 90%. And so I get a confidence interval, 300.64 comma 319.36. The three significant figures would be 301 to 319 milligrams. There's our confidence interval. And this is A part finished. A B part says, why is this interval so wide? Like the interval is really, it's, it's 18 milligrams is my interval. Well, the reason why it's so wide, if I would, if I want, so let's back up here for a second. The confidence level is 90%. So if I was to run this procedure 100 times, 90% of them would capture the true mean of sodium content of these hot dogs. So, and right now, so that I'm off somewhere, I, it's a range of 18 different mil 18 milligrams, which might be a lot for hot dogs. Um, so if I want to, the reason why it's so wide is because it's 90%. If I wanted to make it narrower, there's two ways I can make it narrower. One, I could change this to, let's say, 70%. And so that would make this value smaller and this interval smaller. But the trade-off there is then I'm not nearly as confident of if I've captured the true population mean of the sodium content. So if I want to make it another way to make it narrower, the only other way to make it narrower is to increase n, is to make n larger, which will make this value here overall will make this computation smaller if the bottom of my denominator is larger. But because it's square root, you have to make it much larger to get it to work. Um, 
So that's how I can make it narrower. C part says, state with a reason whether or not the central limit theorem was used as an example. Well, the answer is most definitely, because what we can say is this is a normal distribution with a mean of 310, and I know that I had 36 over the square root of 40 squared. This here is my, well, my variance because it's squared, but this particular, even if, let me say this again clearly, even if the population of the hot dogs is really strangely skewed like this, because my n value is so large, the sampling distribution will turn out as a normal curve with this mean and this standard deviation or variance because n is so large. So yes, most definitely the central limit theorem was used. All right, so if we go to D part now, the lab wishes to have a margin of error of seven milligrams. Well, if I have a confidence interval, here's the X bar I get. I want this calculation here to be seven milligrams. So I want to determine the sample size. And I'm going to assume that I still want a 90% confidence level. So that means my Z star times sigma over root N has to equal to seven. Well, my Z star, I remember, is 1.645. I can't change my standard deviation, but I can change root N is equal to seven. Well, if I do some computations here, basically I'm going to flip my fraction over. So root this is going to be um, over 1.645 times 36 is equal to 1 over 7. And so n will be 1.645 times 36 over 7 squared. And if I do that calculation, which I've already done, it ends up being 71.06. Or either way, but I have to round it up to 72 to make sure it is at least 7 milligrams. Maybe this was 0.66. Either way, I round up no matter what this number is. And so if I make n 72, my sample 72, then I know my margin of error will be 7 milligrams. And then finally, E part. E part says a lab runs another test with 70 hot dogs. So n is now 70. The mean, x bar, is 315. The confidence interval constructed was this. So here's 304.99, here's 315, and here is 325.01. So I want to find the confidence level. Well, I know here is my formula plus z star sigma over root n. I know this here is 315. I can just do one of these values. I don't have to do plus or minus. I can just choose one of them. And so let's just choose one. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go 325.01 is equal to 315 plus z star. Sigma I know is 36 over the square root of 70. So now just a matter of solving for z star and making sense of it. So if I subtract the 315 and divide by this, or sort of multiply by this and divide by 36, I get z star to be 2.326. Well, to find out what this is, I then go to my calculator. And if I think about what this is, actually, let me draw you a diagram. Here is our normal curve with z. And this is saying that z star is 2.326. I'm looking for what is, here's a negative 2.326. So if we find where this particular value is, I'm looking for an area. 
if I put negative, then I get this area here, which will probably be an easier one to deal with. So I'm going to make it a negative one. So if I go second, I'm going to go two. I'm looking for an area, so I go to number two. My lower level is negative 999. My upper level is going to be negative 2.326. 0 and 1, and when I do that, I get this area here, 0 0.01. So if I multiply that times 2, that means together these areas are 0 0.02, and so what I have left in the middle here is 98%. And so my confidence level is 98%. So confidence levels, confidence intervals, margin of error, all really important ideas to get your head around.